And it's Shelton who's going to kick this one right. off. Wally Masseur and John Fitzgerald alongside me, Rob Koenig. So you're saying, Robbie, that uh, Tommy Paul writes with his Good left hand, line. throws with his left hand? Mm -hmm. He throws with his left hand? Yeah. Wow. That's a good-looking service motion. There's something about lefties. They just look smoother. Oh. Comes from great tennis stock, of course. His dad was a former player. His mum, part of a, the Witskin tennis family. Mum Lisa was a very good junior player. Well, that'll be Tommy Paul's challenge right there. Even though that wasn't a quality return, he's just got to make as many balls as he can. Big servers. They like cheap points. Oh, we saw Lisa's brother there, Rick Wins Witskin, the younger brother of uh, the guy that we know so well. Todd, there he is. He unfortunately passed away at a very young age. He's got some heavy artillery, this youngster, and he is fearless. No sign of nerves right there. And, Robbie, over the course of your tennis journey, good you meet some good line. people, and Dean Goldfine is one of the best. Like, I've known him for a long time. He worked with Aaron Crickstein and, as you mentioned, a whole host of players. But he's the kind of guy that if you played one of his boys and you, you won, he would seek you out in the locker room, shake your hand, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Like, he's an absolute prince among men, Dean Goldfine. Great character. Also had a lot to do with uh, Sebi Cordy's upbringing, didn't he, and, and development of his game. So there's a lot of history there for Dean. Well, there's two rifling forehands from Ben Shelton. Out. Go to Went the three-quarter kicker, trying to just chase it up high above Those Shelton's long. shoulder. But he's got such a lively arm. He got the racket hit around the ball, covered the spin well. So the forehand doing the damage early for Shelton. Down. Forty, thirty. Had a fairly good start to last season, did Tommy Paul. Ranking progressed nicely from Adelaide through to Miami the first quarter of the year. And Again. Oh. He then lost seven of his next eight matches from Houston. We lost to Kyrgios, incidentally, all the way One through to on. Queens. And uh, as we have a look at a service motion here, gets good knee bend. You liking that, Wally? Yep, so far so good. He's already cracked one over 200, as most players can, and you kind of expect that on a lively day like today. But, yeah, very neat, efficient. And Brad was telling me after that run, he, he felt his attitude wasn't good, and he had a good sit down at Queens with Tommy. Brad doesn't mince his words and uh, called him out big time. Tommy took ownership of it, agreed that his attitude was poor. And 
turn things around beautifully. First half of the year we went 16 Long wins, team. 14 losses. And after that little chat they had, just as the grass court season was going on, 23 wins, 13 losses. So much better second half of the season for Tommy. He's got the utmost respect for his coach. Yeah. Can you two up there imagine how big your house would be if you'd possess this surf? <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, it's just phenomenal, isn't it? What a motion this is. What, what a, uh, it's like perfect. He's got the right hip out. He's got the strong body. That is vintage TP right there. You've got to take your hat off to anybody that, that has beaten the two Spaniards that he's beaten to get here, Davidich Fakina and Batista Agu. If you beat those two guys, you've got game and you can play from the back of the court. And he's showing us right there just how methodical he can be from the baseline. No, <laughs> you don't mind. Well, he has got the biggest second serve, the biggest oh, average second serve of all the eight quarter finalists, Wally. That's going to tilt your averages up. 197. Second serve, basically two first serves. And at 15.30, it, that is not fair. That's fearless, isn't it? Fold. Pitti, you and I both had a Pitti. good close up look at uh, Wayne Arthurs through the course of our years involved with the Australian Davis Cup team and different service motion, different body types, certainly around the same top speeds. Wayne seemed to get a little more through the air though, didn't he? A little more, particularly that kick out wide to the forehand. So you sort of think maybe Shelton's got even room to add a little bit to this serve. Well, he's young too. You know, uh, this serve in three years' time will be, will be, I think, faster and have more work on it. I, I, I think. I mean, his body shape is incredibly good for tennis, and the strength that he, you know, Wayne had that classic motion with almost a, dis, uh, a disjointed shoulder and wrist. It was like double jointed, wasn't it? Yeah, and and um, but this guy's pure strength. It's going to be a massive serve in a few years. Well, I can tell you, Fitzy, he's currently on a 60-serve hold streak. He's held 60 service games in a row since he was broken in a second-round match. Wayne Arthurs went on a 110-game serving streak at Wimbledon before he met Agassi, who, of course, has a knack of 110, huh? breaking those sort of Again, records. With a serve like that, you're Open always going to be games, in business. One. He settled nicely into this one. 2 one, one. We'll take on the winner of the Rublev Novak matchup. Everything about Tommy Paul's game is very tidy. There's nothing extravagant about it. The service motion is neat. Really good summation of forces.
Fairly simple swings. Fold. Fifteen on. Fitzy, we can confirm it's 31 degrees at present in Melbourne. And as you suggest, at court level, you can probably add three or four degrees to that. So the heat will be a factor in the playability of this court. Oh, that's a good bit of athleticism right there. It wasn't a lot of court to smash that, that ball into. He almost hits this smash inside out. Almost hits the wrong side of the ball. He's got sneaky speed on that serve. Oh. The racket frames that these two boys are using is just proving to be awfully popular on tour. One of the more powerful rackets. That's a 70k difference between first and second. You have a lot of players using that brand these days. Game over. And that's a recent switch for Tommy. Changed at uh, the end of last year. Two games on. Well, sometimes when you see a player on tour doing great things with a certain frame, you'll find other players gravitating towards it, thinking the answer lies in the frame. There's Brad Stein. He's having a look at a little... No, he's, he's broken the whole thing. No, there's the tablet. Ben Shelton, he's almost a throwback, isn't he? It, 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 he's not the same as uh, most modern players, and uh, he's got that old-style game, that big serve volley type game, a tough-to-break serve, not as um, consistent possibly off the ground. Just reminds me a little bit of 15, 20, maybe 25 years ago, and but it, it might be super effective in today's game as well. How do you think he's going to do at Wimbledon, Wally, with that serve, yeah. that smash, and a few of those volleys? And also, too, yeah, he's lethal off that forehand side. And Fitzy, that smash, so that final awesome. smash that he hit, he, ma he makes it look easy. It's not such an easy shot. It was a good defensive lob from Tommy Paul. Well, you could tell by his mindset, he just he started accelerating into that ball like he did, just didn't believe he was going to miss it. It was beautifully hit. And that's where, that's where I feel like as, as the years go by, he'll get a little more bite and jump on that second serve. If he develops that good kicker out to the forehand, that'll be a valuable shot. That's coming on a little too fast in the centre of the square, but he's not afraid to hit it, and I think he'll improve that particular serve as he gets a bit older. Luck. Good service. Yeah. 14, 15. Just went to college for two years, won the NCAA singles title, as well as clinching the team title the year before. Of course, with his dad being the coach, uh, the scenes were fantastic. It's economical from Tommy Paul, isn't it? Just. Doesn't look like too much can go wrong. Yeah, straight back 
quick, straightforward. Look at that, just stays on the ball for a long time. Simple swings. Doesn't overplay, great accuracy. American men. This is their first quarter final at a major, let alone the opportunity to make it through to the semis. Fifteen lot. He has won a title before, as Tommy won indoors at the tail end of the season, that lovely event they have in Stockholm. He's got experience at the sharp end of regular tour events, but this is a different gravy. Yeah. Don't you Give us an idea of of that two week duration. You've been twice a semi finalist at the majors, Wally. How different it is to playing a regular tour event and doing well in a regular tour event. Well, I, I was considered someone like in my era, Cedric Pearlin, who was a solid player, but really did particularly well in the slams. That's good accuracy. There's that simple takeaway from Tommy Paul. Not much can go wrong there, but Robbie, you know, Ball to eras change and the game has changed, but I, I do think you've got to manage your own game, but I, I just think the harder you work physically, mm -hmm. you get your moments in slam tennis, and if yep. you're fit and ready to take those opportunities. Because five set yeah. tennis at some oh. point whether you've got to back up from a five-set match or that particular five-set match, you're kind of reaching the limits of your, your endurance. You'll get tested, you'll get found out. And I think if you've done the work... Well, what, what was that saying? Uh, the more you sweat, the luckier you get. Yep, absolutely. And I think for a player like myself, you know, you'd need a hole in the draw or maybe you could beat a seed and take their draw. But yeah, hard work meeting opportunity, I think, is for... A journeyman in the slams. I'm not talking about the the champions of slams. They mm -hmm. probably just think I've just got to manage my game and I'll take care of the opposition. To Robbie, and we've seen it a bit with Ben Shelton because he's had some roller coaster Love matches. You mentioned he saved match point in the first round. You've just got to deal with things with equanimity. You cannot, there can't be too many highs and lows in a five set match because there will be big momentum shifts. There will be moments where you could play for over an hour and lose a set seven six. But you've got the ability just to hang in there. So, having being able to stay on that even keel, of course, matters. I thought Kyrgios gave us some good insights when he was asked off that final on court there by Sue Barker. You know, how was the two weeks? And he just said, I am exhausted. I'm so tired. You know, just testimony to how difficult it is. Uh, the likes of oh, Federer, Djokovic, cool. Nadal, they make it look so easy time and, and time again when the majors come around. But for the mere mortals, it's, it's a big ask. Yeah, but I think too, even for... Roger and, and Rafa and obviously Novak and Andy and you know you start talking about Sharapova and Serena their, their days off and are not like the days off of a journeyman you know there's expectation there's media there's sponsors there's entourage yeah. so navigating all that for the top players must be something they have to come to terms with and, and maybe that's something Nick's doing better to be honest mm -hmm. Even these days, the temptation to get on social media and spend time and energy on an off day dealing with trolls, you know, yeah, things like that. Just texting, right? I did notice that um, Radek Stepanek took Seb Korda's phone away from him after he beat Medvedev. Hmm. Took it off him and put it in his pocket and said, I don't want him to read that for 24 hours. Brilliant. 
Nicely poised here at 30 or 3 or. Left. Road service. So 172, but it's the height of the bounce that was the problem. Up above shoulder height. Nobody enjoys it there. Let's have a look at this from behind Tommy Paul. So he's airborne trying to make contact with that. And you've got to get enough racket head speed to cover the ball. From up there, it's not easy. Good wheels, though, Fitzy. From Shelton. Look, what I'm noticing here, though, is that um, Tommy <laughs> Paul is incredibly uh, relaxed here. He, he's had these wins under his belt. He looks, you know, he looks confident and not anxious at all. And his modus operandi here, I think, is just to work on getting the Shelton serve back. I think he feels very confident once the ball's back in a baseline situation against Ben. It's the serve that's the problem, but if he gets it back, gee, he looks comfortable. And when you start getting the big server serve back, they want cheap points, they tend to strive, lose their rhythm. Oh. How good is that? How good is that? Well, I think a great option for Ben Shelton too, because that's his style. He's, he, he's got the big serve, he comes in occasionally behind it, he mixes the points up, finishes them. Oh. Uh, the points more quickly than than other players do the mentality of tommy paul is to keep the rally going he thinks the longer it goes the more chance he's got and uh, so it's a bit of a contrasting objective here those are some hands new balls please tommy paul with new balls He's a smooth operator in that backhand. He is as sweet as they come. Long. Got a good knack, hasn't he, of just playing the right shot at the right time. Tommy Paul in trouble, just blocks, bunts, chips. And there's that backhand. That has been very damaging already. Yeah. Thumbs up from Ben. Yeah. Yeah, the backhand is a little bit... Uh, unusual isn't it it's got a it's a funny hitch in it but this excuse me the forehand i mean from tommy paul it's, it's got a bit of a hitch in it but the the backhand this it's a complete rolls royce uh, he can do anything with that shot short backswing uh, uh, is an underlying secret for it i think because it simplifies it increases the margin for error yeah. ball too long Backhand spin dominance. You can see Tommy's got a decent amount of purchase on his backhand, more so than Shelton. Food. Game over. Always more over than in the net, I felt in that backhand Ball pass. And this battle well and truly joined off the eight games. And you'll see that from Shelton. You'll see if you, you saw a few errors off the ground there and then coming to the net very quickly in that point. So he doesn't really provide a lot of rhythm for his opponents. And obviously he's capable of getting those cheap points on his serve, so... 
games can come and go pretty quickly. He's not the type of player to build pressure over time. He's got some pretty good heat on that serve. And I can tell you, how's this for a, a number that Hawkeye guys gave us? Remember that match point that he was down first round mm -hmm. against Zhang of yep. China? Hit the fastest serve of the tournament when he was match point down. And it still stands at 228 kilometers an hour. Oh, my goodness. Match point down, fastest serve of the tournament. That one... Three kilometers shy of it. Can you guys remember Fifteen. Mike Gandolfo? Yeah. With a left handed serve, he had one of the fastest arms I've ever seen. It's not dissimilar. It's not the arm I don't think is quite as fast, but but the the body um input into this serve is just beautiful it's he leads with that right hip and it's like a slingshot it's uh, easy power yeah. and you get the feeling fitzy he can serve like this for five sets no problem right seven 30, 50. yeah or eight sets <laughs> i'd say <laughs> it's it's just a beautiful thing uh, robbie i'm so jealous of this serve i i, I, oh, I, I feel you yeah His dad, Brian, had a pretty big serve as well. Fourth round of Wimbledon. That was back in 1994. The best results at a major for his dad. Beat Michael Stieck. First round there at the lawns of the All England Club. Did father. Four. So slick. This guy Johnson. is no one trick pony. He has got a great skill set. Serving to stay in the set. Fifteen that for some nice variety from both, but uh, the younger Shelton there with the slicer, buggy whip forehand with lots of side spin and top spin and powering the backhand. And, you know, it's going to sound weird because that first point I really liked from Shelton, you know, the slice and you know, we've seen him play a few drop shots and then he tried to smack a backhand, didn't quite catch it. Go back to the last service game from Tommy Paul and it was kind of a loose game from Shelton, but that in itself is variety. You know, yes. I think I actually think he's a really awkward customer to deal with. You never quite know what's coming. He just denies your rhythm. I mean, that first point was a really, uh, I really liked the way he went about it. He just didn't get the final shot right. Let. And Wally, no matter how solid you are, when you play a guy with a serve like this, there is always yep. uh, there's always a nervous undertone about getting down in your service game because of how hard it is to break back. Well, we are at that stage of the match, of course, where a break point becomes a set point. But you even feel like that at one all and two all, don't you? A break point almost feels like a set point because of the quality of the serve. It was a nice repost from Paul at 196 kilometers an hour. Second ace for him. He's a good combination of power and accuracy, Tommy Paul. 40, 50. He's got a nice weight of shot. But gee, he puts the ball in the right place. Doesn't overplay. 
And he's got his game face on today, hasn't he? You can just see how dialed in he is. He's got the blinkers on. He's not looking around much. You'd have to ask a, a serious question if he didn't, though, wouldn't you? In a quarter final for Major, <laughs> he'd want to have his game face on. Okay, Paul. Yeah, I guess my point being sometimes it's not easy, Fitzy. When you've never been Fine. on a stage this big, this deep in a major, that sometimes you can get distracted and not play your best tennis. Yeah, no, no doubt, Robbie, I understood. But, um, I, I, you know, both of these guys, this is an opportunity of their young lifetime, not, not of a lifetime probably. Yes. But certainly at this stage in their careers, what an opportunity for one of these two players. And playing another guy they know so well, someone is going to be awfully disappointed tonight. And, and if, if you're one of these two players, you better do everything you possibly can to, to win this one. Yeah. 15 long. Ben Shelton's going to have a lot of different matchups in his career, but he's going to produce something special most of the time because of how different he is to the run of the mill modern player. So against him, there's always going to be great matchups. It'll be entertaining. Yeah. You just saw there. Oh. Converts on the early breaks that, as you guys were alluding to, Shelton, if he breaks within the opening four games, he wins 91% of the sets. Paul, a little lower down, but it's testimony to how good Shelton's serve is, guys. Yeah. Which speaks to what Fitzy's saying about just the, the constant pressure. Absolutely. That one all, two all, lose the serve. It's, it's tickets. It's a virtual set. Yeah. And remember, that only takes into consideration the first four games, and it's a lot tougher to keep on holding to close out a set. Yeah, to hold four or five times for the rest of the set. Mm -hmm. Fold. Certainly, Tommy Paul is starting to make Don't more you. and more inroads on the Shelton serve. Well, look at his numbers. He's 14 winners, Tommy Paul, so he's controlling his share of the points, certainly from the baseline. He's made three unforced errors. Yeah, this, this will be the 36th point on the Shelton serve. Tommy's only had to play 24. He's building pressure over time, but this is what Shelton can do. He can he can turn it all around with just one shot, whether that be the serve or we've seen it a couple of times with the forehand. And you feel at 192 kilometers an hour, he's not even redlining that serve, is he? And that's the beauty of it. Like mm -hmm. Sampras, best serve I ever saw, he was always within himself. That gave him the accuracy. Fold. Shelton. Quickly turning defence into attack with that backhand. 6-5. Fitz, you were just saying in the break that uh, Ben Shelton, he asked for the the air conditioning unit to be turned on. I mean, that is this, have I missed something? Is this a new feature? We didn't have this last year, did we? I believe we did. We did. I just thought they were Eskies. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be the Australian in you, Wally. <laughs> A 
And for what it's worth, the South African also from the ones I know, Robbie. <laughs> oh, man. To tell you what, there it is there. Maybe it doubles up as one. I hope it doesn't go in reverse like liposuction. <laughs> Lat. Both sellers. Yeah. Thirteen, fifteen. Okay, things getting a little more interesting now. Good body language, just sending a message to the other side of the court, letting Paul know that he means business. Just heightening the tension with some come-ons. That's a very accurate second serve. And it's it's not easy to change the line of flight, is it, off that swinging serve sometimes. You see Novak do it so well, he just hits it back where it came from, gets himself in the point. You're basically hitting against the spin when you try to go line. He's hard to push off the baseline too, Paul. 19 shot rally. And this uh, what is this? His eighth tie break for the tournament so far, Ben Shelton. Certainly been involved in a few. Guys from I'm, I'm interested in both of your opinion here. To me, this is almost seems like it's Tommy Paul's evolution into a, 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 a really uh, like almost a contender at these majors. He, he, he's coming out here, it seems, with his game. He's, he's showing us all how relaxed he can be and still play at this level. Uh, it, he's, he's rather impressive. break this tournament one, for Shelton of two. course none more important Shelton. than the first one that he played final set match tiebreaker against Zhang winning that 10-4 and he mentioned the two that he won against Poprin he's five and two to this point yep. in his favor he said the ones against Poprin was so important for his confidence here to get that two sets to love lead he thought he played clutch tennis there And Fitzy, I, I'm with you on the. One. I get what you're saying with Tommy Paul. I mean, it, it's heavy and it's accurate, but it's all tidy. It's all within himself, and I think that's the real key. If you can play within yourself, that means you can play at a high level for extended periods of time. It's, 
He's not trying to do anything special or come out of his shoes. You play within yourself too. You can be accurate. Two, so he's reached that one. point in his career. Four. Yeah, where, where he's playing at 80% and it's good enough. And it's good enough. And yeah. that's, that's, you know, everyone talks about the players, you know, they play well in the big moments. Well, no, they they play within themselves for the majority of the time. And then in the big moments, they show you something special, what they can do. And when he misses Tommy Paul, he doesn't miss by much. And he's got good wheels. So it's a pretty complete package. Yeah, and Wally, that's an important point. He, very good players miss by very little when they miss, or they tend to miss by less than, than the lesser players. They'll spray the ball more. They'll miss by a few metres here and there. But the good players, when they miss, it's tight. So he's showing good signs here to me. And conversely, I don't mind that Ben Shelton has some big misses because he's going to be a little bit wild thing from time to time. But that's going to be part of his charm and part of his disruption to the opponent. Three, two, Shelton. Yeah, he's more of a unique unit, isn't he? he he's, he's got his own style. He's, he's going to be different to most of the current modern-day players. So I get what you're saying there too. They're, 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 they've both got their own styles. Um, and both maturing very quickly, and they have done over the last week. It's 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 really uh, amazing to see, and encouraging to see for the from the younger generation. Well, he's been perfect at using his forehand once he's landed Three. the oh. first serve. Hunting the third shot with his weapon, so important. It's been a great combo for Tommy thus far. The surf and then hunting that forehand with the third shot of the rally. He's almost got to cover that wide serve Three. a little bit, Shelton. Oh. That swinging serve. Paul, of course, quite capable of going tee, but he's getting a lot of cheap points out there. confident that Tommy was going to make ball. that shot. He got the ball he wanted, missed his favourite backhand. Can't believe it, actually. Had a bit of whip to it, though. The forehand jumped on him. And he likes to hold his ground. He doesn't retreat too much, Tommy Paul. So maybe just ran out of time on the shot. Big point for all. No way. I mean, we've seen some huge dead let cords in this tournament. I mean, Five, none more four. so than Rublev run on match point. I was just about to compliment Tommy Paul. What a great return. I was about to say he's in the point, exactly what he would have wanted, and, and then that. Ben apologising. One of the niceties of our sport, you apologise for a net court, even though you don't mean it. Yeah. So 10 points played, not a single point going against the server. Five, oh. And again, look at the easy power in the background there from Paul. 203. And 207. Close to the line. Yeah. Six, five. That is rapid. Four. I mean, 
the average first serve speed of Shelton's is only six kilometers an hour quicker. So Paul not far behind, but he does have a set point here. And even that big lunge from Paul, only just sailing long. Six. Oh. He really does control the racket head well. Yeah, you, you guys have highlighted it really well. It's not only the side spin and the movement away that you're having to deal with, but it's the bounce. You speak to, it, it was a lovely poll that was done to all the players and who had the best first serve. There was a lot of variety there, but when asked the best second serve on tour, Literally every pro to a man said John Isness because of the bounce. Well, there's that one point against serve. Seven. And what a time six, as we get to that six all four. situation. His heart rate will be elevated right now, given this opportunity. Chance to put the opening set on ice for Tommy Paul. Patient, persistent. So there he shows us what he has got, 198. But in the heat of the moment, he put that aside to back himself from the back of the court. Let for service. Fitzy, if there's one thing, and you're sitting courtside there, you're down there with Ben Shelton, is he, he returns pretty deep in the court. And, you know, I'd like to think that he could stand a little closer and just develop a nice block and get himself in the point, just whether that be off the backhand or the forehand, not give up too much space, particularly for that swinging serve, that one missed. But, yeah, just have a, a reliable block to get himself in a lot of these points. Well, it's becoming more apparent that Paul's Tommy's got him pretty covered it from the back of the court. He, gee, he's hardly missed a ball, Tommy Paul. And he looks he looks like he's doing it in his sleep. He, it, it, it's so natural for him just to keep the ball in, and he's so confident he's not going to miss. I think Ben needs to do something Let a bit us. different, Wall. And pa, pa, look, so part of that might be block the ball back from uh, in closer, but also maybe go after it from inside the baseline sometimes too, just for something different. Not just to start the rally, because because when he starts the rally and he's in a neutral position, Tommy's winning most of the points now. Seeing players uh, follow in the years thereafter. That's good stuff. That year was. 87. That's right. Love the thing. And Fitzy said that Tommy Paul looks like he's doing it in his sleep, and that is a big feature of his play today, just how calm and methodical the whole thing is. When he, when he won that last point, Wally, he looked directly at Brad Stein, uh, the coach of all coaches, who, by the way, commentates with us a little bit. He coached Jim Courier to two, two wins here at Melbourne Park. And Brad sitting in the coach's box, they looked at each other, they pointed at each other as if to say, tactically, yes, well played.
15. Paul. 208 out wide. And uh, this is what Paul is making him do, sort of go to the red line to get those cheap points. We saw a big double fault on the previous serve. Just up the ante even more there, 220. But he, was, he hit it out of the middle, didn't he? And just clipped the tape with the block return. Brad telling him just to transfer his weight a little bit on that block. <laughs> Gee, how much time have you got to think at 220? He's just Paul reacting. Jackson. Straight at him. for the first time in this match. A very valuable let court. One game on. It's Dean Gold fight. Same alongside Dean as Danny, who's his physio. We need a little boom mic in those uh, player boxes just to catch what the coaches are saying. Yeah, and they're just sitting behind with the RF cap on his... Alessandro Santalbano. So, so you might recognize uh, Alessandro's face, Pippening part of the teammate group that manages Ben Shelton now. Of course, Alessandro used to travel around with Roger, part of Roger's setup. There he is. He's been on tour for a number of years. Of course, Coco Goff is another player they look after. Pretty good stable of young players to teammates. Of course, headed by Tony Godsick, Roger's long-time agent. Tony Godsick's about 10th on the all-time prize money <laughs> for <laughs> male players. The money he's earned off Roger's endorsements and managing him. Funny when you, we're, you're back where we are, Robbie. So we're right at the top of the stadium in our commentary booth, and you just see things pretty clearly from up here. And you say, okay, yeah, cross, backhand, come in. He, it's just like a computer program at the moment, Tommy Paul. He's just picking all the right shots. Yeah, and Ben Shelton really Ball having trouble Ball. making inroads, isn't he, against the Paul serve? And. Uh, I think he's just making all the right uh, choices. And, and by the way, he hits the ball out of the middle of the racket, Tommy Paul, without, with, with a lack of fuss. Limited effort. He's a good timer. And I mean a good timer of the ball. Game four. New balls, please. And with another quick hold, Fitzy. Florida Gators. And the scary thing about Shelton's progress, folks, is that it really was only in May last year that he started to get his teeth stuck into tour life and tour life in America initially. Played a bunch of challenges, got a wild card in Cincinnati, made the most of that, made the third round there. Bit Casper Root along the way. Not a bad scalp. Yeah. Early doors. Yeah. And when he came on ecology, he was ranked 548. 15. And then 
coming into the US Open around 165 and then finished the year by winning three challenges in a row just to sneak inside the top 100 at number 97 and that's how he got a, a main draw acceptance here at the AO. Fold. The states can nominate a wild card for the Australian Open. We have a reciprocal arrangement so you would suggest if he was just outside 100 he probably would have got that wild card. Fifteen. I mean, it's not easy to win three challenges in a row. Tiburon, Charlottesville and Knoxville. One of the first that he won in Champaign. Of course, Champaign, Illinois is where Craig Tiley used to coach at the University of Illinois. Little connection there. He's starting to run out of a few ideas here, though, young Ben. It's a bit of a dangerous time for him. There's well, two it, balls that have flown, but he, he wants cheap points, doesn't he? He just can't get them. But what, what do you think he's got to? What's he got to do now, Wally? To, to I think he's got to change his game a little bit, do things a little bit different. I mean, this is it's it's becoming a bit set in its ways. This matchup. Well, he was serve volleying there. I, I think he's got to go to a bit more of that. You know, use the serve. Think of it as a serve volley, not serve and a cheap point. But that's just too good, Fitzy. He's in. That's a quality serve, and Tommy Paul is Don't inside the baseline, them. meeting it early, doing the right thing, hitting it back where it came from, covering the spin. Yeah, at the moment, Fitzy, I think he's just too young in his career to deal with the consistency that's coming to him. Yeah, I mean the timing of Paul is quite extraordinary. I mean that left-handed kick presents all sorts of different problems in terms of spin, and he's it's coming out of the middle beautifully. Yeah from Tommy Paul on the return. But I'd probably like to see him just serve volley a bit more so that Tommy can't just block it back and get into that baseline rally. Well, I think in the context of this match, that was a massive point. Uh, we always, you know, quite often, maybe we overstate how important certain points are, but they are. And, and that one was it, 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 at 30 40. That would have set the tone for the second set as well. Right. First serve has been the problem for Shelton, Shelton in this set, guys. He's only made four out of 13, including that last serve. So, would help a lot if he made a few of these. And see there, there Fitzy, see Tommy Paul, he really, if he stands back, you go wide, but he really crowds the baseline. I mean, he took that first serve on the baseline. And I think that's where Ben could kind of serve into the body if he's going to serve and volley, if he's going to take that crowded position. That was more in the body. And if he stands back, well, then the slider yeah, becomes yep. more effective. As you know, Robbie, Shut that up. is patented by Well Emerson into the body and get in. Let, don't let the guy swing at the return. 100%. Come in and make the first volley. See there again, you can see Paul, he's, he's not intimidated by the pace of the serve and his eye is so good. He's meeting it very early. So if you go wide, he's on it. He, yeah, he just can't, he can't get his head around the consistency of Tommy Paul at the moment. He's just, there's no escape valve. He's going to have to hit more first serves in. He's going to have to mix it up one way or the other, both on the service games, I think, and the return games. Hey. 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 What a difference when he can play off the front foot behind a uh, first uh, serve. Well, the beauty of it is we don't know so much about Ben Shelton, and we're going to learn a little bit about him today, aren't we? How he deals with this situation. I mean, Robbie's talked about winning three challenges at the back end of last year, how green he is in terms of international travel. We're going to find yeah, out something about him. We just learned a little something there. That's a good scramble, saving a break point and then just loading up on some forehands to close the game out.
two games all. That's the beauty of these young players like Seb Corder and Ben Shelton. And we saw Yuri Lehechka last night. You just don't know what's coming. Every day for them on the tour is a new day. There's no muscle memory there. Yeah, and if you haven't been following Ben's story, when he came down under to play an Adelaide qualifying at the start of the year, it was the first time, folks, that he'd ever travelled outside of the US. Not only for tennis, but for a holiday, for anything. First time he'd been abroad. Who was the unlucky guy who played him in the first round of qualifying in Adelaide? Feeling a bit sorry for that guy. Now don't feel sorry for him because he got the better of him, did James Duckworth. Beat Shelton three and six. Okay, well, Ducky has had a huge win in the first round of Adelaide, but can you imagine? He can he can come away, no travel experience, and do this. Imagine what happens when he gets a bit of experience under his belt. Yeah, well said, Fitzy. Fifteen home. He said that the toughest thing to deal with was the time change. He says that when he travels in the States, he only has to worry about three hours. Well, when he's done as much travelling as, as us three, he'll start <laughs> looking like a beaten favourite as well. <laughs> OK, that's a rare error from Tommy Paul. Wasn't under any Fifteen. real sort of pressure. Gotcha. Just lifted and took the ball up with him. Brad Stein there felt the pressure of that way. He, he was disappointed with that miss. Doesn't see that too often. Feeling the pressure, the old fella in the box. Good to see. And again. So quite natural isn't it to have a concentration lapse at some point to maintain his level but while he here you and i were thinking ben shelton's got to change something he's played exactly the same oh. and, this, and this time he just got he a may, dip he may get the result well we didn't factor in that sometimes your opponent can help you maybe that's why we're sitting courtside and the coaches are in the coaches box <laughs> Just going to ask you, Porter. was it time to change anything simply because he hadn't been broken and it wasn't like he was down a break in the set either? So, when do you make that change? Do you wait until you, you've got broken or do you just stick with uh, what's been working so far? Fitzy, you kind of commented on just how Dude. smooth the backhand of Tommy Paul is, and he does have that. It's not necessarily a hitch, but he almost takes the racket away, and that missed by a matter of millimetres. But the racket head is almost in front of the wrist, and then the racket head trails, then he catches back up. So, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, an, oh. it's slightly unusual for him, and, and that's the side that he's missed on. So Yeah, you're talking the forehand, though, yeah. Yeah, of Tommy yep. Paul. Exactly. So that's maybe where some errors can come. Oh. He's, he's got to tidy up this backhand and return, though, to oh. the front court. He, he's sort of going wide with impunity, Tommy Paul. Two in this game, he hasn't gotten right. Game four. Spreading the court magnificently. First tennis major of the year into its second week. Fifteen long.
Fold. Fold. Fifteen. Hold. So percentage coming into this quarterfinal was uh, 62 for the tournament. Left. 45% in this set mm -hmm. per serve percentage. But don't you think that's a consequence of the pressure of the return of Paul? He's over serving to a degree, looking for cheap points. Because Tommy's just giving him nothing. That's a, it's an interesting discussion that, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the mindset would be when you've got to serve that big. I think big serve, they, they get so many free points over the course of a year and over the course of the matches, their ego almost demands it. And when they don't get it, they strive for a little extra. Yeah. I like that play though. So it's Just got to make the volley. Just intermittently serve and volley. Mm -hmm. Keep mixing it up. I love a guy who attacks a volley too, but I think he he, he, he over-attacked that one. He could have taken a little bit off that, I think. Really tried to hit that hard. Thirteen. So he gets a tough shot to execute. A, a drop shot off a, a ball that's been sliced. Yeah. And where he was in the court. Like, even if he makes it, he's got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, we talked about Tommy dipping last game. Well, he did. He was good enough to recover, and this has been a dip. All it takes is two points, two uh, shot choices that are a little bit wrong. doesn't implement them. Break point. Ball. Two twenty. Yeah. That second serve was rising off a good length. Once again, beaten for bounce. It's funny just watching Ben, and he's so young in his career, and he's so raw in terms of matches played at this level, but it's a, it's a series of patterns. You watch Tommy Paul play, and it's, he's really bunkered down. You know what he's trying to do. You know what he's about. But with Ben, he's got the drop shot, the occasional serve volley, the rifle forehand. He's got a little bit of everything. And sometimes it's hard to execute that wide array of shots. Game four. And he finally gets broken. I mean, it, Roger Paul Federer might have been an exception, but to two. the great players have patterns that they probably stick to 70, 80% of the time because they win. But with Ben, you get, a, you get a little bit of everything. Yeah, well said. And after holding serve 68 times in a row, Tommy Paul ends the streak there, guys. And that, that swinging serve out wide to his backhand is just paying dividends for long. Tommy Paul. He can just dial that in, 172, hit his spots. So does he start to lean that way? Anticipate that serve? Does he stand closer to the baseline, cut off the angle? Left. For service. Left. For service. Ah. 
now. Go to long. Just wonder if a, a little bit of fatigue is starting to creep in for Shelton. It's almost an hour longer on the court, but of course doesn't have the experience of five set tennis like what Tommy has. Yeah, Robbie, I just hope he doesn't drop off here now. I, you, you wonder, don't you? Yeah, five sets in his opening round. Remember, saving a match point. A couple of tough sets against Nicholas Jerry and Alexi Popperin, and then his last match against JJ Wolf. Almost four hours, Fitzy. Game four. Straight into the CBD by Flinders Station. So again, logistically, things so well set up here in Melbourne. Yeah. Very livable city. Good it always rates long. very highly in terms of livable cities around the world. Do the Victorians vote on that, Wally? Only Victorians, that's right. Okay. No, I think, you know, there's Scandinavia, they say, have very livable cities, and Melbourne does feature. has a terrible climate, though, but... <laughs> Robbie, you better be careful what he says. You better be careful. There, there won't be a visa issued from uh, north of the border if he's not careful. Okay. We'll let our South African mates in. I'm not sure about Wally, though. <laughs> Well, he game finds his first serve in that game, and it's been a little bit of a problem for him in this set. And, Robbie, you said in the break that Tommy Paul is a hardened professional. He's Paul leads by five games to three. He's gone through the steps, hasn't he? He's played some tough matches in slams. He's won ATP events. And it's really shown here today. He's been absolutely rock solid. Now, let's just see if he holds his nerve. I would suggest... He's going to go wide this first point. It has been unbelievably successful for him. Wide serve to the first court. One of the few times he's missed. Okay. And you also discussed fatigue. And it's, it's not just physical Love fatigue him. for Ben Shelton, but it's... Emotional fatigue, the roller coaster of a five set match, several of them. And then you've got the emotion, the victory, the elation, the adrenaline, calling home, dealing with the press. You don't do a lot of press at challenges. So it's just been a massive week for him. But surely now, at this stage of the match, if he just gets a sniff, maybe the exuberance of youth. Find a little something here. 15 off. It's just offered up too many so enforced errors for Ben. That's probably the side from the back of the court that he has to tidy up, that backhand wing. Forehand's dangerous. His risk for award is lower than Tommy Paul's. I mean, he, he's hitting the ball lower to the net, so the margin is less. You will hit the tape and miss the ball more when you do that. And he's not getting the results from actually doing it. Tommy's just keeping the ball higher over the net and waiting his chance. Again. When he has Second to take ben. a risk, he takes it oh. and gets the result. And that result Six is a two sets to love lead. Players from the US, it, this is good to see. Yeah, it's a big market, isn't it? <laughs> Important for the game. Hey. 
Yeah. Well, there's the a microcosm of the match so far. Just Tommy Paul playing with plenty of margin. He's heavy. And he's just breaking down the baseline game, and in particular the back end of Ben Shelton. Fold. Rob, are you familiar with the South African cricketer, Tony Giddick? <laughs> I am. When you said thick and fast. That's what you thought of. certainly reminded me of Tony Greg, hard and fast. <laughs> Wonderful accent. Well, where to from here for Ben Shelton? First things first, improve that first serve percentage. He's just got he's just got to hang in now. Two sets of love down. That's a big ask against a guy playing as well as Tommy Paul, but he's got to keep that scoreboard ticking over. Fold. And if I could say one thing to him right now is don't overserve. Serve within yourself. Out. Love nothing more than to pounce right here, would Paul. Well, I think that's important to serve within yourself and and hit uh, your ground strokes within yourself too. But but I think now we've got to see some different tactics. He can't just keep playing the same as he's played so far, or there'll be more of the same in results you would expect. Yeah, but I think I think he's been frustrated that a lot of his best serves have been coming back, and as a consequence, he's overserved. And in that second set, he was below 50% first serves in. you like he is mr smooth isn't he tommy paul Oops. he makes everything look easy he's quite a unique mover too he's very lithe he, he, you don't see a super powerful athlete when he runs but you see someone who's unusually quick and and relaxed and he bounces to the ball it's a really terrific mover yeah, that seems a feature for me, just how he, do he doesn't carry any tension. Even when he serves, it's so supple. Yeah. So he's done a good job of holding his opening. You can either stand a little closer, you can move a little further to your backhand side to cover it, but you can see where he is now. There's a lot of room for Tommy to go out there. 15, 15 long. So there it is, he's still at 100%. And I think he's got to take that serve away from him. Sure, he'll ace you down the tee, but you've got to be a little proactive. Speaking about all the Americans that are ranked inside the top 100 with a win today, Tommy Paul would become a top 20 player. That would be a career high ranking for him. And that's exactly how he's playing, isn't it? See, there he is again. So he tracks laterally. And it just, the spin takes him out of court. Then he feels, well, I'm so far out of court, I've got to do something special. 
And look, I, I'm not being critical. I don't want to sound critical at all of Ben Shelton because I'm loving what he's done. It's but just a technical adjustment. I guess we're just talking yeah, as, as commentators. I mean, he's so raw in terms of tennis experience and big match experience. One game on. But if you're just looking at something, one thing that he can address to try to put a bit more pressure on the Tommy Paul serve, that would be it. And of course, Wood gets around the locker room quickly. People will be watching this match. They'll see a graphic like that come up and it'll resonate with coaches and players. And you know, your game comes under forensic scrutiny when you're out on the tour. And people will start picking holes in it as quickly as they can. And the other thing too, you know, if you're Dean Goldfine, who's, who's steering the uh, career of Ben Shelton, and I'm sure Brian's got a fair say in it too, it's like, you wouldn't even be too stressed at this point. Like, mate, it's quarter final. Have yeah, fun. Absolutely. Have fun. Don't, don't drop your head. Don't drop your head, but but I think also there's such value to be gained here Love if he can him. if he can stay out here. Uh, the longer he can stay here and try to get his teeth back into this this match, that will stand him in good stead for his, for his near future and his long term future. And I, I, I just hope he really doesn't drop off. He hasn't he hasn't really, but he's but he hasn't really changed and been proactive. I, I think enough. So this is a learning curve. But, but what a foundation to work with this lad has. He's exciting. He may not win today, but what an excite, exciting kid he is. That'll work. And I guess we've seen a few errors. He's been on the red line, as you said, Fitzy. He doesn't have a lot of margin, but when he gets it right... 15, 13. It's a fine angle here. So it shows if you can get the backhand in the strike zone what he's capable of. thinking that in the future grass so will be Ben Shelton's best surface do, do you think or not well I with a serve like this he's he's going to be dangerous certainly if you if you look at the majors and that was well left as Robbie suggested US Open yes Australian Open yes but Wimbledon there's a There will be an element of the grass that will actually make Tommy Paul less effective and bring okay, exactly. Ben's uh, skill set to the fore. And I'm not Tommy Paul individually, but that type of player. They won't be as effective on the grass. What a great return, too, from Tommy Paul. He's just got a knack of finding the middle and getting the ball back into play out by three or four centimetres. Seems like it's a hard to get Tommy Paul out of breath. Doesn't matter how extended the rally is, he wouldn't blow out a candle. Oh, 
actually did a, a lot of training in the off season. Right, with, that is, oh, Sun Wukwon, they train together, they share a physical trainer, and I mean, if you saw him in Adelaide, how good he looked in that final. Whatever they're doing, it's working. Another chance to break here for Tommy. Oh, that is dropping the hammer. <laughs> 217. That's his uncle there, Rick Witskin. Also a former tennis player. Lad. And Robbie, a shout out to the Witskin family. Absolutely. What, what, what a great thing that they have a young man in their family that, who's, who's come through and has the potential of young Ben. That's a nice serve volley. Yes, uh, Ben's mum, Lisa, is a Witskin. Now, of course, married to Brian Shelton. And, and Todd Witskin of, of our era was um, a huge loss to our tennis fraternity. And, and we send our best wishes to that, that whole family. Was it Carmel, Indiana? I think. I think, I think you're right. outside of Indianapolis. Uh, Todd Witzkin was one heck of a player, played at USC. Uh, we've missed him for a long time. Deuce. You may not prevail in this game, Tommy Paul, but these are valuable points. Yep. Once again, you can see he's winning the arm wrestle. He's on the baseline, Ben Shelton, two or three metres behind. These games matter, even if you don't come up trumps. They can add some value down the track. Yeah. That's not it. Yeah, it's just body blow after body blow. So you're suggesting, Robbie, with the body blows, they drop their hands and then you go for the chin. You set me up for that one. from Tommy. So once again, you can see, look at the core position of the two players. There's Tommy Paul. He's just patrolling the baseline. He's not taking any risks, and Ben is maybe three or four metres. He's behind the Melbourne sign, in fact. Yes, he's keeping them on the front foot, can he? But I, I don't mind that Ben doesn't necessarily have patterns. I really don't, because I think, I think that's almost the way forward for him, but I think yeah, there's just more hours needed on the practice court and refining some of the technique of his shots. Just more hours, more big matches. I think that's going to be his point of difference. He'll just execute better. I mentioned that if he does indeed lose here, Shelton will be... Around 43 in the rankings. That's what his live ranking is currently. Which gets him into all the thousands. Or close to it. Yep. So he'll be playing top flight tennis week in, week out, which in itself will be interesting to see how he then handles that. Mm, the travel, which yep. is something he's not used to. Fold. But Brian's done a pretty good job of managing his trajectory thus far. I'm no sure kidding. he'll continue to do the same. Oh, what wheels! Raw athleticism from Tommy Paul. And managed. Oh. Look at the control of the racket face. Look, the racket doesn't move. It's all legs. 
This keeps the racket on the plane, and that is millimetres inside the line. Fold. He's got him. He's got him with a fast ball on the second serve, as that I would say in America. 213. Trying to slide into the body. That is a nasty serve. Second serve, mind you. That'll raise the uh, second serve average speed up. But he's like a he's like a fastball baseball pitcher, and you've got Tommy Paul up the other end. Just saying, well, I'm going to see every one of your yep. pitches over the course of this game. And then down the track, you can take advantage. Let's see if he brings out the Kenny Powers fastball one more time here. Game done. It's good stuff. Hanging on in there is young Shelton. Playing catch up in the third. One, two. Same Fifteen serve, isn't it? Long. Every time. You can just dial it in. But mind you, he's hitting it awfully well. I think that, that serve was so good, even if you're covering it, I think it beats you. Yeah. Probably the one thing, the only thing that Ben has to focus on here is he's just got to hang on to his serve. He might get a little window on return. He may not. But he's just got to hang tough on Paul's his serve. Off. Tie breaks are interesting things. Tommy Paul might just have a moment when he's trying to close this match out. Just got to stay with him. Yeah. Game Paul. Serve well, play Two well. Games uh oh, they're back. And they're not minding their business. They're bred and big in Melbourne. <laughs> no kidding. Punch him in the stomach. Not sure he'll feel it. Plenty of padding. Got a couple there. of pillows in there. <laughs> Long. Be interesting to see if Tommy Paul can just maintain this tempo and this patience that he's displayed because we even saw it with City Pass last night. As the finish line gets a bit closer, the, there's an urgency that creeps in. You want it to be over. You want to be in the next round. It's looming. And then you can, things can change. So it'll be interesting to see just how Tommy Paul approaches this, the biggest moment of his career, his Grand Slam career, certainly. Can he just maintain the poise? Imagine if you could just tap in the ability to produce adrenaline. Imagine that, Wally. Can you? Flight or fight? Ball to line. Can you induce that? I'm not sure if you can, but I mean, there could be an outside influence that could make it happen in an instant, right? Yeah. Seeing a couple, okay. couple of his hits from Tommy Paul. That certainly wasn't the case for the first couple of sets. Yeah. And Shelton doing the right Shelton thing, hanging tough. And the words of Colin Fleming, never leave the fight. 3-2, second set. Oh. That Seagull, I think he's making a bit of a pitch. He is. For the blonde. He hasn't left it for a while. Suddenly from minding his own Here business. Look. look at this. He's taking liberties. 
If I was a boyfriend, I would still whack that <laughs> seagull in the stomach. The terracotta colour roof of Margaret Court Arena. Rod Laver Arena. That's where we are. Court number three, just to the right there. There's the, the bridge. Tandiram Bridge at shoot to the series. Am I saying the right name? Time time. Time. I think so, Robbie, yeah. We already have two of the semi-finalists in the men's singles. Karen Hashanov and Stefano Sitsipas winners yesterday. This is the third of the men's quarterfinal matches. Fifteen clock. Then, of course, this evening, not before 7.30 local time, it'll be Andrei Rublev to take on Novak Djokovic. The winner of this match will take on the winner of that one. Now, go to long. Go to long. Forty fifteen. Tommy Paul hardly losing points on serve in the set. Makes the yeah. first serve. Yeah. He's one or twelve. Going to the well Three once more on. with that serve out wide. Shape of that particular serve has been outstanding. And because he's been so successful with it, he can just serve within himself and maintain his line and length. And this is what I mean. This is what Paul, conversely, has done really well. He's gotten the best serves back of Ben Shelton, and as a consequence, Ben Shelton has overserved a little. Fifteen long. So there we have uh, Pat Cash. He's front there with the blue shirt. Just behind him is Richard Fromberg. There he is, Frommy, the big Frommy, Tasmanian. And he was a great Davis Cupper. His Davis Cup results were above and beyond his ATP results. He really represented his country well. And Wally there, Rod Frawley, by the way. Is oh, was that Frawls? Rod Frawley is to, uh, to the right of, or to our left, looking at them, uh, Davis Cup player living in Germany. There he is, Rod Frawley, and yeah. uh, he's got the, the big gold watch on. Frawls, of course, semi-final of <gasps> Wimbledon, Fitzy, if I'm correct. Yeah, he beat me there. He, he, He's never let me forget it, Frost. <laughs> Boy, could he serve. He lost to John McEnroe that year, Wally. In the semi-finals. So did a lot of people over the years. From <laughs> McEnroe, my God. <laughs> What an exceptional grass quarter he was. There he is, Frawls. Younger brother, John Frawley, was also a handy player for a number of years before injury took him off the tour. Yeah. 
Now, Oh, Tommy's just pecking away, and he's like that seagull <laughs> out, out there in the in the outside the stadium. He, he's just continuing to peck away here, and his opportunity you would think might come if he keeps that consistency up. Yeah. Death by a thousand picks. Fourteen. Two twenty nine. Caught the tape, but it was registered at two twenty nine. Oh, his backhand is world class. Tommy Paul. It's um not as extravagant as Novak's, but the way he can just change direction, line, cross. And it's one of those shots where you think he's not going to miss it. it it's it just looks safe, doesn't it? Very underrated. What, what a shot it is. And he was quite static. Under the law. It was a high defensive lob, probably needed to let that bounce. So he's faced some break points and he's gone with the heat. So this wing is one from eight on break points, Tommy Paul. Okay. Oh. And that is a very important break in the context of this match. We're a player going against the real youngster, the raw 20-year-old young, youngster. Times might change in the future, but right now, Tommy Paul is playing like a very mature professional. I love his thought process too, Fitzy, because he's been 100% effective long. with the wide swinging serve. So, of course... Ben Shelton does the right thing there. He closes a little bit to protect that surf. And so what does Tommy do? Slides it into the forehand body. Like, just thinking really clearly and then executing beautifully. So his backhand is world class. Maybe we've underrated it to a degree, but his serving is... Probably a little underrated too, just how effective it is. Yeah. And I think maybe 13, 15. above and beyond all those great qualities he has, I think he's come on in leaps and bounds between the ears, Wally. Yeah. I mean his mental strength and mental fortitude has been it's been fantastic in that progression has been fantastic in the last two years and i think that's where brad needs a lot of credit because there's not many coaches that would tell their player what for when they've needed it and huge credit to tommy as well for taking on board what brad has had to say to keep him on the straight and narrow and holding his hands up when he hasn't been uh, the ultimate professional. The attitude's been poor. Robbie, that, that begs the question, why wouldn't a coach of one of these players give him the what for if he needed it? I mean, Because they get fired. That is an indictment. <laughs> the p player pays the coach. They <laughs> don't like what they're hearing. They fire them. Okay, here's a little, well, little window here. We've got 30 all. He's missed his first serve. And he served a double. 13. So from 30 love, forehand error. He probably made the wrong shot on the previous approach. And now a double. So this is just tennis, isn't it? In a nutshell, can turn so quickly. Now, Robbie, you were talking about how do you produce adrenaline. This is what Ben Shelton needs to do right here. Yep. Just find a little something. 
He has yet to break the Paul serve. He's had two looks. And it's third time lucky. Well, here we were waxing lyrical about just how professional and he's almost played the perfect match, Tommy Paul. And in the twinkling of an Paul eye, game's on. he's made basically made four errors. I, I don't think it's to do with his professionalism, though. I mean, I thought professionally he was fantastic when he lost that because he, his head's kept his head down. He's kept his mind. He's... he's concentrating thoroughly I, I thought he handled that uh, really well Wally and but but he just played Love a couple of bad him. points at the wrong time that that's pressure isn't it and but gee he's been good when he broke he barely made a sound and then when he lost his serve from 30 love he, he didn't make one either he's he's really into this match and it's, I think it's all good signs really just just played a poor game from 30 love Love yeah, in life it's 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond to it, Fitzy, and this has been a good response from Tommy. That opening point, good hustle, as you said, good attitude. Bounce back ability. Oh, he had a good look at that pass. Almost too much time on the pass. 15, 13. Fifteen fourteen. Thirteen fourteen. more chance to break. Come on! Wow. The innocence of youth. Dude. You'd have to think that's virtually a match point and there's your second serve speed. He who lives by the sword. Just going to the well oh. once too often there. That was 180 out wide on the second serve. High part of the net. It's funny, isn't it? Tommy Paul's had eight break point opportunities in this set, and he's gotten one of them. And uh, Ben had one chance and got it. Those break points—they are a crucial stat. 
Again, Shelton. Well, that's right up there with one of the fastest serves of the tournament. Well, things have taken a turn in this third set after being up a break at 4-3. Tommy Paul's lost the last two games. He's given up a break, now serving to stay in the set. Fold. Just looking at the Tommy Paul forehand, and it, it's 15. nowhere near as exaggerated as uh, Francis TFO, but he's got a little bit of that TFO lag on the forehand where the wrist takes the racket away, and the racket hit is in front of the wrist before it drops back and then catches up. Wally, does what? Does it matter what so happens when you're taking the racket back as to how it's going to impact when you make contact with the ball? No, I guess it's only if if you have some affectation or it takes time away or it breaks down, you know, under pressure. And it, as long as it's repeatable, it's yep. that moment before and the moment after impact. A lot of different styles out there, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. I think if you're a good coach, you've got to understand when a shot is effective. The technique might not be pure, but if it's effective, you've got to know to leave it, right? Interesting, too. We call people coaches. You know, sometimes I think of a coach as someone that develops a young player, teaches them yeah. stroke production, and then Left. when you're out on tour, they're almost like That's trainers nice. slash mentors. Mm -hmm. Oh. I would have loved to have that service game on the previous one. Five games on. Ben Shelton was on the red line in the previous service game. Wasn't thinking too much about placement, it was just heat. Be interesting to see how he approaches this game at five all. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen long. This is the beauty of such a big serve though, isn't it? Because he, as long as he hangs in there, it, he's still a scary um, opposition. If he, can, if he can somehow squeeze this set by oh, the yeah. next game or in the tiebreaker, he still presents a major problem to, to Tommy Paul, even though it feels like Tommy's been on top for most of this match. This serve is, is very intimidating. Fold. Let's look at that shadow. Let's see, it's just starting to make its way across the court now. Just throws in another bit of complication. Yeah, I feel like that, sh that shadow sunlight can be a bit of an equaliser in some ways. You know, it, it brings everyone back to the field a bit because it's awkward. Yeah. Well, nothing awkward about that surf at uh, 216 kilometres an hour. Burning through the air. It's 
the second batch of the men's singles quarterfinals. Ones yesterday for Karen Hashanov and Stefano Sitsapas. These two will take the winner of the match, take on the winner of the match this evening. Between Novak Djokovic and Andre Rublev. Is slated to take place in about an hour and a half. 7.30 local time. Ben Shelton might have something to say about that. Mm. Extends this match a little. I think he's still 100% winning record, Tommy Paul, when he swings it wide on that first court. So it's a lot. And there's that uh, very important as a young Australian that you make that catch, Robbie. <laughs> the crowd will let you know if you drop it. feeling there's still a little bit of life in young Shelton. We're just seeing a few more shots from Tommy Paul that aren't quite as clean. Just lifting on a couple of forehands and not missing by much. the change of direction off both the backhand and the forehand for 14, Tommy Paul. 13. Just changing the line of flight at will and Ben Shelton had to work hard there. That was like a training drill with him as the pupil. That was the longest rally of the match, Wally. 25 shots in the making. when Shelton's dangerous. He's almost playing with reckless abandon here, isn't he? Yeah, he's almost like he doesn't care. He's unpredictable. He doesn't want to run. He's getting tired. There's just enough there to be able to lash out at a couple of ground strokes. And he's got genuine firepower, so, oh, yeah. you know, why not, in a sense? Why not? I think this is going to be a feature of his play going forward. He's going to be hard to predict.
Well, we saw it when he was in trouble and served. He just upped the pace. He just went for broke on the serve and, and paid and off. And now we're seeing it from the back of the court. That was the easy setup after a big forehand line, but he's added 10k to these ground shots for sure. Vaporizing a couple of forehands in that rally. All of a sudden now. Thank you. He has a set point. Whoa. Again. Ben Shelton is that. not Shelton. done yet. He is still very well, much again, alive and on. kicking. New he wins the third. Well, let me hear it. And off the serve, Ben Shelton, he's going to hit his way out of trouble. Well, well, he's dangerous, isn't he? With a capital D. And, and, and now Tommy Paul still has to break the serve. So he always presents danger, does Ben, young Ben. And, and Tommy Paul, though, he's a, a pro, isn't he? And, and I feel sure he'll put that right behind him, just as he did the break of serve when he, when he lost that as Robbie calls it, the boomerang break. He, he got up a break, then lost his serve. He, I thought his uh, attitude was fantastic. So, we won't change that. But it's we're in for a bit of a ball game now. We are, aren't we? But this is where he, he's very enigmatic, Ben Shelton. We're saying he's got to change this, he's got to change that. But I think he changes things all the time. Like everything he does uh, well, is unpredictable. And well, he pres he he possesses assets that most of us don't have. <laughs> so. You know, our mode of thinking is, well, we're playing one way. We've got to change tactically a little bit. But he just hit the ball harder. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, this is the great okay. challenge of best of five set tennis to maintain. Can't dig himself too many holes. And he got a bit emotional, too, at the end of that third set. So he's, he's got to come down off that high very quickly and, and settle in. Four. And that's exactly what you are talking about, Fitzy. The big high, the big roar. He responds to the crowd. And you go and sit down and you breathe a sigh of relief that you're still in the match. But we're still going. Uh, uh, just remind me, are these new balls, Wally? I think they are. I'd have to do my math, Fitzy. Be because they're, they're carrying through the air a bit further, I think, with the new ball. So that's that's been something different as well he's had to contend with. right back to the ground stone first game four sets tommy paul without any fuss it, there was a drop off there that he handed that game to tommy paul unfortunately for ben's uh, for ben's sake and this is Fifteen. where the training that you talked about robbie the off-season training Tommy Paul took part in. This is where you get the benefits. Two hours 34 into this match. Four. If you're still feeling fresh, it's a lot easier to concentrate. You make better decisions and you move as well as you did at the start of the match. Four. The better position you're in, the more options you've got. 15. I was really surprised that some of the very best players in the world were playing exhibitions way into December. I just thought, well, had such a long year. You got the Davis Cup finals, the ATP finals, November, December. Then you play exhibitions in December. I just don't know when you kind of freshen up and start to do some of the heavy work to prepare for a slam like the Australian Open. And that's what Brad's is wanting Tommy to do this year, not play as much. Yeah. And do better preparation blocks. So he didn't play the so first week of the year. His, his coach, front left, did play the first week of the year so he could extend the training. His first tournament was the Adelaide 2 event. Uh, 
Because I looked at uh, like Casper Rude, he just played with no imagination here at the Australian Open. He was playing exhibitions in the Middle East and then down in South America with Rafa, and he'd had a big year. I didn't understand that. Jam Hall. Now we're talking about a two-time Slam finalist, so yep. he, he should really target the Slams. Wouldn't have anything to do with uh, some greenbacks, would it? <laughs> well, possibly, Fitzy, but it doesn't make you happy. You're a great advertisement for that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Oh, Ro Robbie, don't get into a slanging match with him. Don't, don't do it, mate. Sharp as a tack, this guy. I'm maintaining my three feet in the booth, Fitzy. <laughs> sharp as a tack and a sharp tongue with it. Oh, nice. Nice pass. Didn't try to pass him. He's in a tough position, so he just asked a tough question of Ben Shelton. But I looked at, you know, like a Taylor Fritz, for example, too. You know, he's a guy who's inside the top ten, and he was playing exhibitions too, deep into December after a big year. Plays a lot. So, okay, I I'm going to ask you guys this question then. So, you obviously... Casper Root shoes, you do well in the majors. That's what you want to do. But you do well in the majors in the hope that you get paid the big bucks to do the oh. exhibitions, right? So when do you not do the exhibitions? But or when I do you do the exhibitions? I think there just comes a point where... <laughs> Nicely done. Ben Shelton, defence into attack. I just think there comes a point early in your career, Cas what's Casper, 24? Mm -hmm. So I'd still consider him early in his career and he had a breakout year that, you know, I think at the end of the day, whether you made a million bucks in the Middle East would pale into insignificance if you won a couple of majors. And maybe at the back end of your career, you, you soak up a bit of that easy money. I'm interested to know what Sitsipas is um off-season was because he was in Perth early preparing for that United Cup. Yeah. And his preparation there was first class. He played well there, he won some tight <laughs> matches and he's gained in confidence. He hasn't lost yet in Australia. Yeah, he played a couple of the Exos as well, Fitzy. I'm just trying to remember how many and how far back he went. Game. So, Shelton. Ben Shelton is on the board in the fourth. It's 2-1. Two, two games to one. Nice. To take out that third set, and that's the best he can do. Just hang tough on his serve and try to find a way through. Still down a break. Paul serving 2-1. Thing. Those are Sneaky. It's a good effort to keep the point alive. Watch this very point carefully. Alive. Watch what Shelton does here. This one coming up. Actually, hit, he's hit the reverse side of the racket. I didn't even pick that up. Look at that. Bomb. So he's hit that with the forehand side of the racket. Yeah. Good skill. Yeah. Oh. 
That's why Koenig has paid the big bucks right there. I didn't see that, Fitzy. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes better than that seagull. Well, Fitzy, you do know that Koenig, of course, in, in German is king. And that's how I think of him, the king. I don't doubt it. Look at that, the reverse side. Probably could have played it orthodox, but... You'd think that'd snap his elbow. Look at this. Amazing, you could get enough racket face on the ball to yeah. make it. I find that interesting, though. That, that just shows he's got flair, doesn't he? Too true. Love the thing. serve is going to pay for some nice off. real estate in the years to come for the Shelton family. At the tail end of the third set, Tommy Paul would love the added insurance of a double break here. If you weren't with us, he was up 4-3 with the break. He had just broken in that seventh game. And of course, got broken right back. Broke it again over oh, the second time in the match. Twelfth game of that third set. In those rallies, it just looks like Ben is risking more than Tommy. It, it looks steadier from Tommy Paul, and it looks like there's less chance he's going to miss. I think his coach has just said to him, look for the tee serve. And he has pointed to Brad Stuffinson. <laughs> and that's the trouble with coaching he, he saw it, right? seen it i mean he saw it come on brad yeah but yeah but that was done in a really friendly respectful way i like that so no, they're some, having fun yeah some of the players so some of the players might have had a real go at their coach for that and you don't know for sure he's got to be a little bit more surreptitious with his signs for that physical drop-off just given his age yeah we're learning a bit about him Wally aren't we and youth but he's he's pushing there's been a couple of minor dips but you've got to give it to him but for a young player to be maintaining as long as this this, this is good stuff Florida Gator. Only 
Greedy. But he's still down a break. Points in a row. That's the only dip that he's had. Can't afford to do that again in the third. Here he is serving. 3-2 up. Out. 15 long. You think that's something that uh, Dean Goldfine, he walks away with the stats and he has a look at just how effective that wide serve has been today. And you start to get out on the practice court and you start to find ways to counter. If you could bottle that feeling and sell it, you'd be a wealthy man. There's nothing better in sport than Both producer. A very important moment in a match. And how telling could that moment be for Ben Shelton? After being a breakdown in the third, pretty much we thought down and out. He turns the head, the set on its head. And Fitzy was it noticeable down there? Up here, it just looked like he just went with the heat off the ground and off the serve. Ben Shelton, he's going to hit his way out of trouble. Well, well, he's dangerous, isn't he? With a capital D, and 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 now. Tommy Paul still has to break the serve, so he always presents danger, does Ben, young Ben. And, and Tommy Paul, though, he's a Long pro, isn't he? And, and I feel sure he'll put that right behind him, just as he did the break of serve when he when he lost that, as Robbie calls it, the boomerang break. He, he got up a break, then lost his serve. He, I thought his uh, attitude was fantastic, so he won't change that. But is we're he, in for a bit of a ball game now. We are, aren't we? But this is where he, he's very enigmatic, Ben Shelton. We're saying he's got to change this, he's got to change that. But I think he changes things all the time. Like everything he does uh, well, is unpredictable. And Well, he, pos he, he possesses assets that most of us don't have. <laughs> so, you know, our mode of thinking is, well, we're playing one way. We've got to change tactically a little bit. But he just hit the ball harder. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, of course, this is the great okay. challenge of best of five set tennis to maintain. Can't dig himself too many holes. And he got a bit emotional too at the end of that third set. So he's, he's got to come down off that high very quickly and, and settle in. Four. Four. And that's exactly what you are talking about, Fitzy. The big high, the big roar. He responds to the crowd. And you go and sit down and you breathe a sigh of relief that you're still in the match. But we're still going. Uh, uh, just remind me, are these new balls, Wally? I think they are. I'd have to do my math, Fitzy. Because they're, they're carrying through the air a bit further, I think, with the new ball. So that's that's been something different as well he's had to contend with. right back to the ground stone. First game, four sets. Tommy Paul, with how any fuss. Volatile youngster who's got all of this upside in his career coming over the following years, but is he ready to, to play four, five, you know, really level-headed sets? So it, there was a drop-off there that he handed that game to Tommy Paul, unfortunately, for Ben's, uh, for Ben's sake. And this is where the training that you talked about, Robbie, the off-season training that Tommy Paul took part in. This is where you get the benefits. Two hours 34 into this match. If you're still feeling fresh, it's a lot easier to concentrate. You make better decisions and you move as well as you did at the start of the match. The better position you're in, the more options you've got. 15. I was really surprised that some of the very best players in the world were playing exhibitions way into December. I just thought, well, I had such a long year. You got the Davis Cup finals, the ATP finals, November, December. Then you play exhibitions in December. I just don't know when you kind of freshen up and start to do some of the heavy work to prepare for a slam like the Australian Open. And that's what Brad's 
It's so warning Tommy to do this year, not play as much. Yeah. And do better preparation blocks. So he didn't play the so first week of the year, his, his coach, front left. Did play the first week of the year so he could extend the training. His first tournament was the Adelaide 2 event. Because I looked at uh, like Casper Rude, he just played with no imagination here at the Australian Open. He was playing exhibitions in the Middle East and then down in South America with Rafa, and he'd had a big year. I didn't understand yeah. that. Jam Hall. Now we're talking about a two-time Slam finalist. So yep. he, he should really target the slams. Wouldn't have anything to do with uh, some greenbacks, would it? <laughs> well, possibly, Fitzy, but it doesn't make you happy. You're a great advertisement for that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Ro you. Robbie, don't get into a slanging match with him. Don't, don't do it, mate. Sharp as a tack, this guy. I'm maintaining my three feet in the booth, Fitzy. <laughs> Sharp as a tack and a sharp tongue with it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice pass. Didn't try to pass him. He's in a tough position, so he just asked a tough of question thing. of Ben Shelton. But I looked at, you know, like a Taylor Fritz, for example, too. You know, he's a guy who's inside the top ten. And he was playing exhibitions too, deep into December after a big year. Plays a lot. So, okay, I, I'm going to ask you guys this question 15. then. So, you obviously, Casper Root shoes, you do well in the majors. That's what you want to do. But you do well in the majors in the hope that you get paid the big bucks to do the exhibitions, right? So, when do you not do the exhibitions? Or when I do you do the exhibitions? I think there just comes a point where... Ben Shelton, defence into attack. I just think there comes a point early in your career. Casper, what's Casper, 24? Mm -hmm. So I'd still consider him early in his career. And he had a breakout year that, you know, I think at the end of the day, whether you made a million bucks in the Middle East would pale into insignificance if you won a couple of majors. And maybe at the back end of your career, you, you soak up a bit of that easy money. I'm interested to know what Sitsipas's um, off-season was because he was in Perth early preparing for that United Cup. Yeah. And his preparation there was first class. He played well there. He won some tight matches and he's gained in confidence. He hasn't lost yet in Australia. He played a couple of the Exos as well, Fitzy. Um, just Trying to remember how many and how far back he went. Okay. So, Shelton. Ben Shelton is on the board in the fourth. It's 2-1. Two, Four leads by two games to one. So, Ben Shelton, as we have discussed throughout the course of the third set, he has to use his serve just to keep in touch. He did that well in the third set, and he found a way out of nowhere. He broke 
Tommy Paul twice to take out that third set. And that's the best he can do. Just hang tough on his serve and try to find a way through. Still down a break. Paul serving 2-1. Fifteen. Those are long. Oh, that was sneaky. It's a good effort to keep the point alive. Watch this very carefully. Watch what Shelton does here. This one coming up. It actually hit, he's hit the reverse side of the racket. I didn't even pick that up. Look at that. Bomb. So he's hit that with the forehand side of the racket. Good skill. That's why Koenig has paid the big bucks right there. I didn't see that, Fitzy. <laughs> Eyes oh, better than that seagull. Well, Fitz, you do know that Koenig, of course, in, in German is king. And that's how I think of him, the king. I don't doubt it. Look at that, the reverse side. Probably could have played it orthodox, but... You, you'd think that'd snap his elbow. Look at this. Amazing, you could get enough racket face on the ball to yeah. make it. I find that interesting though, that, that just shows he's got flair, doesn't he? Too true. Love the thing. Tell you what, that serve is going to pay for some nice on. real estate in the years to come for the Shelton family. Fifteen, thirty. Given what happened at the tail end of the third set, Tommy Paul would love the added insurance of a double break here. Come on. If he weren't with us, Don't you. he was up 4-3 with a break. He had just broken in that seventh game. And of course, got broken right back. Broke it again for well, the second time in the match. Twelfth game of that third set. In those rallies, it just looks like Ben is risking more than Tommy. It, it looks steadier from Tommy Paul and looks like there's less chance he's going to miss. I think his coach has just said to him, look for the T-serve.
And he has pointed to Brad Stott and said, <laughs> and that's the trouble with coaching. He, he saw it, right? Seen it. I mean, he saw it. Come on, Brad. Yeah, but yeah, but that was done in a really friendly, respectful way. I like that. So, no, they're some, having fun. Yeah, some of the players, so, some of the players might have had a real go at their coach for that, and you don't know for sure. He's got to be a little bit more surreptitious with his signs. Shelton. I've been looking for that physical drop off just given his age. Yeah, we're learning a bit Go about on. him, Wally, aren't we? And youth, but he's he's pushing. There's been a couple of minor dips, but you've got to give it to him. But for a young player to be maintaining as long as this, this, this is good stuff. The Florida Gator. Full in five. And he's still down a break in the fourth. Well, that was pretty funny. Brad Stein giving the T signal, suggesting watch the one for the T, and Ben Shelton saw it on the big screen. So that's an unforced error from Brad, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, we'll have to remind him of that one. Uh, the we're, we're not going to let him forget that. That's <laughs> magnificent. Oh, that's a beauty. And it was really smiles all around, Fitzy. Yeah, because Ben smiled at him, didn't he? Yeah, Afterwards. He did. Yeah, he, yeah. he looked up and he smiled, and, and then Tommy Paul <laughs> smiled at Ben. It was like, yeah, okay, you got me. <laughs> occasions that uh, Tommy Paul has been a little off balance at the back of the court whether he's attacking or defending he's a very balanced athlete Tommy Paul has only played one bad game in this match and that was when he was ahead in the count in the third set, serving at 30 love, he played four bad points in a row. That's the only dip that he's had. Can't afford to do that again in the third. Here he is serving, 3-2 up. Down. 15 long. You think that's something that uh, Dean Goldfine, he walks away with the stats and he has a look at just how effective that wide serve has been today. And you start to get out on the practice court and you start to find ways to counter. That pattern. Well, well how do you how do you counter well, it? Well, surely it's as simple as just scooting over there. Well, you got yeah, you've got to scoot over, or do you move forward and cut off the angle? Yep. Are you trying to chip? Are you trying to block? Are you trying to come at it? Don't try to hit it down the line for a start. Don't try to hit across the spin, hit it straight back where it came from, a la Djokovic. And then you just gotta hit enough of them to get better at it. It's a great rally and very important for Tommy to remain aggressive because when he's passive, as we saw at the tail end of the previous game when he had a chance to go up a double break, it's when he gets himself into trouble. Got to keep that pedal to the metal. Yeah. It's a strong service hold given what happened in the previous game. Quite easily, you can be thinking about the fact that you should have been up a double break. The match would almost be done and dusted. You forget to concentrate on your own serve. He's done well there. Good powers of concentration. 
Of course, on that iPad over there, you can see that there's more player statistics and analysis that you can look into. He's had a couple of let cords go his way that time. Just set up. It's, it's not quite the same Tommy Paul that we saw at the start of the match. Just a few more errors. He was like a metronome for the first couple of sets. He had it completely dialed in. But who could blame him after three hours of quarterfinal slam tennis yeah. against the firepower of Ben Chelton with the timing? 14, 15. It's not quite what it was at the start. Not for the first time today. He four games drops an ace. Ace number 23 for Ben Shelton. Still hanging on in here. Go to long. Ball to long. Fold. 
Forty fifteen. Roberts in a good position here, obviously at four three, forty fifteen. Two sets love up. Two sets to one up. Tommy Paul. But you just wonder when you look at the uh, the quality of the opposition that it'll have to play next, potentially. Yep. An extra mm -hmm. set, not necessarily what you need when he did have the potential to close this out in three. Yeah, yeah just to remind you of the winner of this one will take on either Rublev or Djokovic. Four leads by five games at three. And it's not even the physicality of the match, but you know, the emotions. It's a little draining. Yep. To be on the cusp of victory and then have that set pinched away from you and then regroup for the fourth. But it's also form and timing. It's, sometimes it's hard to hang on to it throughout the course of a tournament. And, and Wally, you know, the extra hour at the end of the two long. weeks is completely different to an hour at the start of the two weeks. I always kind of equate that to when you're doing a 400 meter sprint. You don't feel the first hundred like you do. The last hundred. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you're running on the spot. Yep. <laughs> 15 off. He's made it. Yeah, this is potentially a very big moment for Tommy Paulo, isn't it? I mean, he has looked like the player that would probably win here um, for a period of time. But to make your first semi-final at a major, this is a big, big deal. Yeah. Not there yet, but, but he's certainly in the box seat, isn't he? And uh, I bet he's starting to think about it a little bit here. to say he's got to try and make Tommy step up to the line one more time given what happened at the tail end of the third set so he's done well here has the young man yeah, he's done well he's just popped a serve down at 213 so he has not dipped at all in terms of pace and that gets back to what Fitzy was talking about it's not just a fast arm but his whole body is engaged the leg drive is there strength from big muscles It's interesting how many okay. times we, we see Ben just find himself in that position on the backhand side of the court. That's that I think is interesting. It's an efficiency of movement yeah, needed. He just seems to move laterally, doesn't necessarily cut off angles on that backhand wing. Three hours and counting. Okay, this is Brad Steinerby sort of thinking this is exactly what I want to see. Because sometimes even if Dude. you don't win this game, but if you put pressure on the server and you don't allow them to roll through it and have momentum, it can work in your favour. 50 unforced errors, Felton, but look, that's the way he's going to play. He's not going to be a consistent grinder from the back of the court. With it. There's a little bit of showboating going on there. Oh. Trying to give the no look and catch Tommy. He could pay the ultimate price. Thank you. Match point, Paul. Yeah. Well, let's not forget. He saved a match point in his opening round here, did this American. Is Tell history going to repeat, Robbie? Yeah. Tell him of the fifth set. The fastest serve of the tournament. He's gone 210 and 206 back to back to stay alive.
he's done it again. I think he's tried to play the reverse side of the racket again. Dude. So it's obviously a little go-to for him when he's stretched. Charlton. What a competitor. Fought so hard this Australian Open. Continues to do so. Well, there's a box Charlton. New He's down, Italy. but Tommy Paul is definitely not out. Well, Come back from the sit down and try and serve it out. 5 4. Does he hit his knee with his racket yet? Knee hits the ground, not too hard. He just runs it out. But um, he's not scarred Ben Shelton by a, you know, a lot of matches too hard. He just runs it out. But um, he's not scarred Ben Shelton by a, you know, a lot of matches where the outcome is inevitable. He's, he's an interesting character. I think Tommy Paul just has to be a little careful here. And I'm not sure Ben Shelton is seeing himself as beaten just yet. Bet your bottom dollar, he's not Time gonna out. hold back in this game, Michelle. We were just discussing, Robbie, the uh, fact that Shelton has youth on his side, very inexperienced, so he, he hasn't entered into the silent contract where one player knows he's won and one player knows he's lost. He's... Every point is an opportunity. So, see what Tommy Paul can come up with. He'll have to be at his professional best to close it out players already thank this you this is something that he and his coach have spoken about a lot was that new balls Did it he just was signal that helps being a good closer got to go wide here all right back, back at, at him. you wow good thought process 15 long. What a great serve to open his account. Just... You know, I really like that in the, in the modern game. You don't see a lot of slice, but. When someone does play the slice, it's to change the shape of the rally. So good slice there from Shelton forces Tommy Paul to hit up. And then he's got a bit of height to sting him with pace. I mean, that's a good, that's a great little one-two punch. Two or three, four, five slices in a row is not going to get it done. That's what you're seeking, that, the variety. And if there's one thing Ben Shelton has to navigate, it's that return out wide 30, 30. on the forehand court to his back end. Look how deep he is. I mean, even if that goes in, you're sort of in trouble. And Carlos Bernardes was in trouble. Well, a serve for in combination has worked Ball wonders game. for Tommy Paul. And none more so in that last point. And it brings up two match points. Tommy Paul 
is in a major semi-final for the very first time in his career. A sagacious performance from the 25-year-old to cement his spot in the final four in Melbourne. Lovely scenes between the two. American tennis is coming in a big way. But today it's Tommy Paul who reigns 7-6, 6-3, 5-7, 6-4 against